Hello, my name is Jim Rotlisberger. I'm a regional manager at Ritchie Brothers Auctioneers, and today we're going to talk about wheel loaders and what we need to look at when we're doing an appraisal. Wheel loaders are typically used to move material short distances and to load trucks. Wheel loaders can also be configured as tool carriers for greater versatility. All the work is done from the front of the machine while the articulating steering gives greater job site maneuverability. Something to make sure you note when you're appraising a wheel loader is what kind of materials and conditions the item is working in. Whether it's loading a screen material or digging out of a hard bank, whether it's an abrasive material such as a rock or a dirt or a topsoil material which is less abusive on the machine. Appraisal should always start with a quick walk around of the unit. The overall appearance of the machine will tell you a lot about how the machine was used or abused. Your main photo should always be taken at a 45 degree angle from the front of the machine. Beginning at the front of the machine, attachments, bucket, front left tire, articulating joint, rear tires, engine, rear attachments, then move to the front, then move your way up to the cab. As you move around, check the frame looking for signs of damage, abuse, and wear, including rust, dents, welds, seats, broken glass, fish plating, bent steps, and at the back of the machine, check at the radiator grill and air intakes for damage. Examine the underneath of the machine, looking for transmission, drive shaft, and axles for leaks or other damage. You want to determine if it's a standard wheel loader or an integrated tool carrier, or ITC. If it's an ITC, it will have auxiliary hydraulics to quickly change out attachments. It will also have a lighter boom configuration than a standard wheel loader. Typical attachments include forks, brooms, stingers, and jibs. Inspect all four tires and look for any sidewall damage or rock cuts. Be sure to note if there are any retreads. Also check to see if there are specialty tires and again note the condition of all four. Also see if all tires are the same brand and model. We call that either a matched or mismatched set. When looking at wheel loader buckets, there's a few things you want to look for. You want to start at the front of the bucket, you want to look at the cutting edge of the teeth, how much wear is left on them, what the bucket itself looks like. If the bucket's been lined or what the bottom of the bucket looks like, you can see this one's had a liner put in it. The wear plates on this one are getting wore, there's a few cracks in them, and you can see by the side of the bucket on this one there's quite a bit of wear. It's wore right through a few of the wear plates. So this bucket's got a lot of life put through it already and it's probably just about ready for a rebuild. You can see on this wheel loader bucket that this panel right here has already been replaced, which means two things. One, it's had a lot of wear, and number two, they're doing some good maintenance and they're keeping their bucket up. Look at the bucket linkage and loader arms. Look for any signs of welds or fish plates. You want to be sure to check all pin areas at the front of the unit, especially the boom, tilt cylinder, tilt rod end, and boom cylinder, and look at the grease points to make sure the unit has been greased recently. Look at the cylinders for leaks. Wipe your hands down the cylinder chrome and see if it's wet or dry. Look for corrosion in this area. This will be an indicator of the type of the material the machine has been handling. This wheel loader has added counterweight to it. The outer counterweight allows the bucket to carry more material. This in turn causes the machine to wear out a little bit quicker. The steerage linkage is highly susceptible to cracks. This is the articulating joint on a wheel loader. You want to look through here and look for obvious cracks or any welds you might see, any obvious play in the steering cylinders or leaks. The back of the transmission, you can see if it's got any leaks or not in it. The other thing you want to look for here, just to reconfirm yourself, the accumulators for the ride control you'll find down inside this main frame when you look inside here. If it's a ROPS unit, make sure there is no structural damage. If it's a cab unit, check the condition of the door and all windows. Also check the condition of the sheet metal around the cab for structural damage or rust. Make sure the seat isn't ripped and that it moves easily. Check to make sure that all switches and gauge and controls are in good working condition. Work all buttons and levers and turn on all lights and flashers. Make sure the heat and air conditioner work. Check for additional features like ride control, load measuring system, and rear view camera. A photo must be taken of the hour meter and VIN plate. Thanks for watching and good luck in your next appraisal.